cannabis first sure. before I can proceed with anything. And then it's like, well, there's no way for me to really do what I need to do except by flame rifting and then hoping that he shoots off because I thought he was leaving one up that whole time with the intent of doing that, of just sure. using Pride Mage on my uh, Vortex there down a turn. And having the option, of course, to wasteland his own land in case of price of progress. Right, of course. Um, and so once he, I mean, at that point, I'm just, I'm dead unless I can induce that play and he went to kill the Vortex and uh, I have basically the only two cards from there that can kill him, which is Price and Fire Blast, so. See, it's crazy because that turn that he played, he played Pride Mage and uh, either Swarm Candidates and left Wasteland up. Yeah. He had Umzawa Shit in his hand. Right. Which he could have, you know, equipped, attacked, done whatever, it changes the way that you play. Yeah. And, you know, at thinking, when Patrick and I were talking about it, it's like, well, it's kind of strange that he didn't play his Jit, but then after, you know, we analyzed exactly what he did, it's like, oh, Candidates is fantastic here because it's playing like the same role as Thalia, which you've had trouble with. Right. Pride Mage is taking care of Vortex, and he also has the ability to play around Price with Wasteland. Yeah. And, like, he has all these options available to himself, and. And then, just, and then he just dies, which is just like incredible. Like this, the setup of, of everything was just very, very well done. You know, it, as as I told Patrick, you know, if you would have just went like, you know, land, chain lightning your guy, flame rift, go. Like it changes everything. Right. Yeah, the, yeah. Di the, the dynamic of it all. Yeah. Because you know you have an air of confidence, and then the Ross is going to think, eh, you know, maybe maybe there's something's up. Here. Maybe I just untap and attack and see what happens. From yes, there. it just changes a lot. It changes. Excuse me. It changes a lot of things in the matchup. Whereas. Now you know you take your time with you take your time with the turn. You analyze all of your options. You know Grim Lava Mansion is a potential option. Just a lot of different things are going on. And so you know you take your time with the turn. And now Ross is yeah wondering what could be going on. Yeah. Right? No, I mean uh, I was actually I wasn't even rushing through that turn. I wasn't slowing down in that turn because uh, uh, I was trying to induce anything. I was actually like just trying to do the math, see if there was another way for me to get hit to threaten lethal without casting the flame rift because once once i cast flame rift there my pants are down like vortex is still in play he has three attackers versus my lava mancer and so if there's a way that i can not cast a spell there that's that's very valuable because then um you know it, it the ball is still in my court effect essentially and he has to play around a lot of stuff sure but there was really no other way for me to have a shot there except by casting the flame rift and then just hoping that things broke correctly at the end of my turn there and so they did. Yeah, you got to give yourself the best chance to win. Yeah. That's what you did. So, very impressive. I'm not sure if the rest of the matches are done yet, but we wanted to have you in here because it took us by surprise, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, to see you just come out of nowhere and end that game. So, yeah. job well done. Well, best of luck to you. Thanks. In the top four, yeah. Patrick Sullivan with his Burninator deck. You're going to want to see the tape on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanking him for joining us in the booth here. Mr. Chapin back here. We can do it. We can do a right-handed shake. That's a left hand. I'm stupid. Uh, on camera. Oh, oh yeah, no, I guess. Right no, hand. it doesn't work. That's right. Ah, not we're not in a mirror. Oh! Man, if we were in a mirror. Taking a look over there, I think I think we do still have two players just finishing up right now. So, okay, we have Joe Lissette and, let me get, make sure I have this name correctly here, Benjamin Rusecki in the game three. Not really too surprising. Joe always playing Miracle, so it is going to take a little while for him. Benjamin playing... What deck is he playing? Rug Delver? He's playing Rug Delver, okay. Yeah. So those guys are just going to battle. Don't have an opportunity to move them over to the camera, but what we can do... Let's talk about Return to Ravnica? We can. Dude, I'm on the same page. Does that know what you're going to talk about? Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to talk about spoilers. No, 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 no. Oh. Previews. Previews? Yes. Okay. Previews yeah. we can do. Yeah. So we'll see what we have queued up here. Okay. We Wait. talked about it yesterday yeah. a little bit. Sure. Just a little bit. Jace. Yeah. That guy's already in the know. We already, he, that's so yesterday. He's, you don't, you don't uh, want to talk about Jesse anymore? No more factors yeah, I mean, or anything? Oh, we have a few spoilers. I have a few spoilers than today's previews. Ooh. All right. So you can get our first you, initial reaction of the cards. Yeah, do we have to, you know, roll the tape? I, I mean... Bang. There we go. So this is, uh, 